You said this goes away. So what's the time frame on that? One day you're going to wake up, eat your breakfast, brush your teeth, go about your business. And sooner or later, you're going to realize you haven't thought about it. And that's the moment. You realize you can't forget. When you know that's possible, it all gets easier. Oops, but what about you? Like, what happened out there doesn't bother you? It was them or it was us, cut and dried. They were in the game. <sighs> what about Fred? Was he in the game? No. <sighs> Lalo killed that guy. And for what? Kill that guy, and we're helping him. It's not the end of the story. Wait a minute. What does that mean? Uh, not the end of the story. What, what are you saying? Are you saying what I think you're saying? Is something going to happen to Lalo? I didn't say that. Oh, Jesus, man. what have I gotten myself involved with here? We all make our choices. And those choices, they put us on a road. Sometimes those choices seem small, but they put you on the road. The road we're on led us out to the desert and everything that happened there and straight back to where we are right now. And nothing, nothing can be done about that. Doesn't help to focus on the past. There's like over a billion people on this planet. The only person I have to talk about this to is you. Well, I mean, he's, he's pretty good. You could have got way worse than Mike, Jimmy. Way worse. And he's, he's, he's right. You made the choice to be involved. Now you have to deal with the consequences. It's always been that. You want me to wait? Nah. They'll be here. Really. Go. You sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, I'll be in touch. Man. Hey, that fire you did at Frings? That was good work, man. <laughs> it wasn't him! Do more. Vas a ver. Uh, he doesn't want more! He doesn't want more! I'm gonna keep that close. I don't want anything bad to happen to him. I'm not feeling comfortable with this. Take me back up the road. Slow. You know something happened. All four? Just do it. Six or seven miles back. He knows something happened. He knows people were out to, to stop this. He's gonna find something. Just that good. The fucking Mike from the Salamancas, you know, he's too good. No. It wouldn't be that easy, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> like if he finds the car, he's gonna see the bullet holes. not gonna just let that slide because now he knows that Jimmy lied he knows that people were out there to stop this transaction from happening True. and he knows that someone tried to cover it up that he's staying because he's, he's, he's a cool character <laughs> he is a cool character but now you know that something was yeah. hidden it's gonna get dangerous because he's not gonna like that they lied to him I uh, quit Schwecker and Copley oh. and I gave up Mesa Verde How 
probably get some pretty good. <laughs> How is he taking this? <laughs> what? <laughs> Kim! <Yeah. laughs> what? What happened? Look, it's been a rough couple of days, so why don't you just hold off on a final decision? You call Rich, tell him you're thinking it over. I already talked to Rich. Then I spent the afternoon in the courthouse with pro bono clients without Mesa Verde hanging over my head. Best afternoon I've had in a long time. Pro bono means no money. So what's the plan here? I don't know, but I'll figure it out. Okay. Leaving Schweiker, I get that. It's a bunch of stuffed shirts, but uh, Mesa Verde, hey, that's like leaving the Yankees to play the amateur ring toss. So it's not I'm helpful. leaving something that makes zero difference in the world to help people who are actually in need. Look, we all make choices, right? And those choices, they put us on a road. And the road has good choices and it has bad choices. And this is a bad choice road. <laughs> what are you even talking about? I'm sorry, Mike. Not as good as Mike. Yeah, bad choices lead to bad it's probably roads Lalo lead calling to bad him. places. When you decided to be Saul Goodman, I didn't get it. Still don't really, but I stood by your decision. And what I did was completely different. How? Because I was leaving failure for success. It's not different. You believed it was right for you. Give me the courtesy of believing this is right for me. And I'm giving you a reality check. This is too far too fast. And I'm giving you a reality check. This is really none of your damn business. She is right. He's kind of being hyper, uh, hypocritical. Yeah, hypocrite, yeah. <sighs> Careful, who's at the door? Yeah. Listen to me. Put your phone down, leave it on, so I can hear. So you can hear you, you what? Do what I said right now. Oh Put it down. God. Somewhere it can't be seen. Oh. He's at the door. Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Jimmy. Hey guys. Oh god. Can I come in? Mm. <laughs> oh man. Follow. Let's come clean. Oh, he's showing the big gun. Tell, tell me what happened. Why don't you? Look, you want to talk, we can talk. But uh, Kim was just stepping out, so... Nah, she can stay. Mm, I knew it was going to happen. I mean, she's part of the legal team, right? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, relax. Sit down, we're just going to talk. Yeah. Tell me what happened. What happened? Yeah, when... Uh, when you picked up the money. What I told you already. Yes. He knows now that you lied, so... Fine, I, I picked up the money from your cousins. It was right where you told me it would be. And driving back, my car crapped out. There's no phone service. Oh. So I walked north through the desert all night. Well, technically he's not lying. Little, but then in the morning, I walked again until I made it to a truck stop. He's admitting some facts. I bought some clothes and I... Tell me again. Oh my god. What? Like it's obvious he knows, man. Tell me again. He's terrifying right now. I just want to hear the story. Lala, this is exactly what he told me, so if you could just... Shh. I'd just like to hear the story. I mean, yeah. I paid a lot of money for that story, so I think I can hear it as much as I want. He's making this a point. He wants to piss him off. He wants to know he's manipulating so, them. She doesn't need to be here. She had nothing to do with it. It was me. It was all me. It was all you, huh? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> What'd you do, Saul? Hmm? Whatever you think I did. I don't really know. I just... She I just... saw your car. Did you push it in a ditch? I don't think so. You don't think so? Well, I mean, you either did or you didn't, so, um... Which one is it? Oh, well, I mean, people could have come after, you know? I don't know what you want. Look, okay. Are you, are you kidding me with this? 
can I, do really you know what he did for you seven million dollars of your him. money he hauled it across a goddamn desert without one penny missing and he got you out of jail for a murder that let's face it you're definitely guilty of and we're way beyond what any other lawyer would ever Can do. get away so, oh. what exactly is it that you're getting at what do you want i found his car in a ravine bullet holes on the side so i'm just waiting to hear how that happened that's it? I, look, I don't know what it's like where you're from, but here in New Mexico, you leave a soda can out, someone's taking a shot at it. That, that, that's what you're on about. You don't think it's possible a couple of yahoos with guns shot up a piece of junk car and then rolled it down in a ditch? End of story? What kind of operation are you running yeah. anyway? Careful. Tell me. Because I think I know why you sent him to do this job. You have no one else you can trust. No offense, but you need to get your house in order. Oh, really? She's got so much Yeah, balls. really. <laughs> if you don't trust your men with your money, you have bigger problems than if you trust Saul Goodman. <laughs> she has a point. She does. And for the record, he doesn't lie. Not to me, not to his clients. He's telling you the truth. Yeah, that's a big lie. Who went through but maybe he likes this. <laughs> She got guts. Told you you were lucky. That's it? He's gone? Oh my god, this kid. Wait, wait, he's not out yet. But wait till you hear the door. <laughs> what now? Mexico. We can breathe now. Woo! <laughs> there was a lot of moments in this oh episode. My God, that was stressful, guys. <laughs> there was a lot of moment in this episode where I wasn't sure if the episode was gonna end. And I, I like three or four times I was like, okay, this is the end of the episode, the next episode, we're gonna have like this conversation. But I'm actually happy that it happened now. Like it's it's done. We can breathe. Woo! <laughs> Okay, first of all, Lalo oh. has a good instincts. He's so good at his job. He should listen to... He should trust his instincts more often. I'm glad he didn't this time. Kim really put him in his place. And I think having her... I mean, she spoke the truth. Like, she's a lawyer for a reason. She knows how to handle this shit. She knows how to play with the truth. And oh, man. technically, he didn't lie. Jimmy didn't lie. He it's just, just he didn't omit he, some of the stuff yeah, that happened. He didn't tell how his car broke down, you know? But he couldn't tell either because that would mean for I mean, stuff happening, they were kind of expecting it. But Mike getting involved on on Gus's orders, that was that was bad. That was really bad. And the fact that he works with Mike, the the fact that he's, you know, in cahoots with Mike, that's also really bad. But there's also the the fact that someone betrayed him. Someone, you know, went out there to to stop this from happening. Someone knew there was going to be a transaction and someone showed up with guns to stop it. So that would have kept Lalo north of the border for a while. He would have invested, he would have investigated, he would have looked into this. And be, because of what happened with Gus, we know that the guy that did this, the guy that orchestrated this, was against Lalo, but for Gus. He was trying to help Gus. So this would have started something really, really crazy. I'm glad it didn't go this way. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Don Eladio and Gus, by the way, I just love the fact that Gus can go from have a good evening, Don Eladio, to... Okay, it wasn't Don Eladio. It wasn't Don Eladio. It was Don Eladio. It was uh, the, oh, the go-to guy. Just, the the go-to guy who uh, spoke for Don Eladio, yeah. that's right. So he's working against Don Eladio. Dang. Well, I think it, I I don't think it's Eladio that's doing anything. I think it's more the this guy that handles the two uh, the two big guys, you know, Gus and uh, and the Salamancas because Hector's not there anymore. Yeah. I think it's just that he understood that right now Lalo was doing a lot of shit. He was doing uh, you know he was he was destroying Gus's business and their little feud, you know, their little war was was 
bad for the cartel. It was creating problems and and you know they were trying to say that oh I mean I've been I've been going through some some crazy things I've been trying to cover it up like Gus was saying was lying to them because of that and and Lalo kept pushing but this guy thinks of the cartel first and their feud was not for the cartel it was between yeah. them so by <laughs> keeping Lalo in prison he made he kind of made sure or he wanted to make sure that there was not going to be any you know problems anymore but Gus wanted him out he wanted him away gone forever <laughs> yeah true bye bye so, Lalo but yeah. yeah as I was saying I just love how uh Giancarlo is so it's so it's so easy for him to just be so happy and nice on the phone He's and got just you. Gus has a great poker face you know um, and poker voice <laughs> that is so entertaining to see seriously he is well we know that Gus has his, his own plan, you know, he's got his, his end game in sight, he knows where he's going, and he cannot allow anyone to mess with his plans. Even if sometimes what he's doing goes against his own company, he's the one that yeah. burned his, his, his restaurant, he's the one that made sure that Lalo got out of prison after making sure he got in prison, you know, because in prison, he, Lalo was lashing out. In prison, Lalo still had too much control, too much power, and he was lashing out because he, he kind of, I mean, he wanted to, to get back at Gus. I think he knew that he was somehow involved because he's, he's just that good. So he needed to get away. And it's true that with too much focus on him paying $7 million for bail, mm -hmm. he, he didn't have any choice but to leave. Yeah. So there you go. That's that worked out perfectly. That was a lot of gambling. That was a lot of taking chances, but it worked out in Gus's favor. And thank God that Kim held her own here because <laughs> they would have ended up in a mess. Oh yeah. I think I love that Mike showed up to protect them, but I, if he had shot Lalo, forget it. They would have been. It would have been too late. Like these two would have had to go like away somehow. They would have be in this mess way too much for them to ever hope to get out. It would have been the end of, of Sol and Kim as we know them right now. So. Yeah, so I'm just glad that everything went fine. Yeah. And I think that what might have sort of convinced Lala about that they were telling the truth, I don't know if you believe in the end of it, is like uh, even under the pressure, Jimmy kept his cool and kept repeating the same story over and over again and each time yeah he was more um well, we'll see. he was he was expressing more what he felt during it I so think... it was a little bit more believable by the third time let me just argue here i think jimmy was an open book i think lalo saw through what jimmy told him from the start because you know when he, he showed up at the well and he said, let's go back to Albuquerque. And Nacho was like, what about the cousins? Well, what about the two the, your, your cousins coming? And he was like, oh, well, I mean, it doesn't matter. I think they never were supposed to show up or something. Maybe he, he never expected them to show up and he just went there to look for what happened because he, he knew deep down that something was off. If they did show up, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but still, maybe he went there knowing that he was because after everything with Kim, he said, "Let's go, let, let's go to Mexico." So not the well, not not anything. There's there's no point in going there anymore. Yeah. So I think he saw through his bullshit from the start, and when he showed up at the house, there's a reason why he kept asking him to repeat uh, the same story because he knew that Saul knew, like Jimmy knew that Lalo was aware that he was lying, and by asking him to, you know tell the story over and over again, he, he was messing up with them like he did with the fish and uh, he expected him to break. Kim just showing up like when she showed up the first time, right after she she she, she started you know freaking out over Jimmy's disappearance and she her, her first uh, reaction was to go to Lalo and ask him questions you know she freaked out. I think he saw her as a an emotional wife that that wouldn't take that kind of pressure. So for her to stand up, freak out over him, but tell him, you know, put him in his place, knowing that first of all, he's got a gun right there, <laughs> and she knows what type of guy he is. Yeah, she got balls of steel, seriously. Yeah, but I think he misread her, and th that might be why it worked in the end, because she kept her cool, and she showed a lot of potential for, for this, and, and she, she did good. 
What I don't know is, does he have a, uh, does he have another plan? Is he just gonna drop this next season? I don't know, but this isn't a finale or anything. And no, nope. uh, we'll see, we'll see, because he's too good. I think he's like Mike. Mike wouldn't let go of this, you know. Mike wouldn't just drop it. So we'll see what he does next. I was about to say he's like Mike before the bad side, but both sides are kind of bad. <laughs> so yeah, the the worst of the bad side. So. We'll see. Maybe he's gonna leave forever and we're, we'll never see Lalo again, no, but I think it not might not forever. be. I don't think it's he's the end He's a good of character. Him. I yeah. want to see him back again. Until this he's dead. I mean, this episode was a lot about just dealing with the consequences of your choices. Mike had a good point. Great speech, by the way. These last few episodes, he's been so good. But um, saying that you are you have to deal with your choices, yet you can't wallow about what what you did before because it's done like now you, yeah. you're just stuck with what's what's after it made a lot of sense with what's going on with jimmy and it it also fits with what's going on with can that fucking fly i swear <laughs> mm, after this we're killing it <laughs> anyway um i think it was really interesting to to see how they're all they're both you know handling the consequences kim leaving uh the firm makes sense with what's happening because I, she's always been about you know trying to help the people that need her and right now Jimmy needs her she knows like she's taking it really good the fact that she knows he's going through trauma PTSD he's not good he needs her by her, by his side and the fact that it's true he could have died and and she needs to I mean her entire vision of you know what's worth it what's what's worth living for you know that that kind of put ideas in her head like she doesn't want to just work on Miss Verde and it's not giving her any fulfillment. Satisfaction. Yeah. yeah, no satisfaction, no anything. So, and she went back for that fucking cat that she keeps around. She wants to make things that, she wants to do things that make her happy. I'm just not sure. Like, like they were saying, oh, if you make bad choices, it's putting you on the bad road uh, type of choice, type, uh, on a bad choice type, type of road. Yeah. And, uh, this is a, Jimmy's right. Like this is exactly what what she's doing. I agree with the pro bono cases. I agree that if she's not happy with with the uh, Mesa Verde, she should just drop well, it. She but, hasn't been happy for a while now. Yeah, and her mind was always divided by the pro bono cases and Mesa Verde, and yeah. she always kept going back to the pro bono cases. But what I fear is what she does next. Like if she goes towards more, you know. Not pro bono cases because she still needs money, but if she wants to help people truly, that's great. If she goes towards more, you know, Jimmy type things, stuff that she's going to regret later, I don't know. Like there's, it's always uncertain with Kim because she, she has a tendency to, to regret what she does, but then she makes the same mistakes like all over again. Yeah. So we'll see where she goes after that, but... We'll see. Jimmy, by the way, was really hypocritical, you oh, know. Oh, was such a hypocrite. Because, gosh, she made that same choice before. Every time, like, Kim wants but to get away from that right path, according to him, he's like, no, 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 you shouldn't do this. Like, he's berating her. But then he does this, he does it, and it's all, it's okay, you know? But, in a way, I can understand in a way why he's freaking out so much about this, because Mess Over Day is a big client. It's a huge opportunity, and it's yeah. a it's a big thing. And he doesn't want her to regret it in the future. And out of, but for him, it's just out of the blue. She just quit out of the blue. He doesn't know that she was maybe thinking about it for a while now. Anyway, there's one last episode before we end this season. So, but I, I think that it's not understandable for him to not understand why she just quit Miss Arrede and quit uh, the law firm that she was a partner of. But to insist when she said, I want to do something that makes me happy, and that wasn't it. And he kept insisting for her that you're going to re regret it, and you need to call, it, call them back, and said that you, uh, you're you going to talk, think about it, I and think it, change your mind. I think it has to do with how he sees himself. You know, every time we he's, he has a conversation about what went wrong in his life, he sees himself as a screw-up, as someone who was never given the chance to succeed, but he was given chances before. He has been hired by a firm. He has, he has had it all, you know, like Kim has right now. But yeah. every time he chooses to let that go, he puts the blame on the people around him, not himself. He made that choice. So now he sees Kim with everything that he wants 
and she's letting that go like he did but because he's used to putting the blame on everyone else that's what he does here too he's like why are you letting that go everything goes well for you here so he doesn't want to put the blame on her you know he's like no one is giving you shit so why are you letting everything go he doesn't understand that she's she's doing the same thing as he did she just wants to focus on her own happiness but True. he doesn't see it yeah so I think that's it, guys. <laughs> We're gonna kill that <laughs> fucking so fly. So stressful. Ooh. Seriously. Oh, I'm, that I'm ending. God. I'm still at it. The entire like last part of the episode was so <laughs> fucking tense. So we're gonna move on because there's only one episode left. Yep. I wonder what they're gonna do for the finale of season five. I really wonder what they have in store for us for that finale. Because I thought like this could have almost been a finale, but it wasn't. So what what tops that? We'll see. We're going to take care of our cat and we're going to take care of that fly. Thank yeah. you guys so much for watching this episode with us. If you want to see the next one right away, it's already on Patreon. Check it out. The link is in the description. Yep. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to watch it now. And if not, with the next one to be <laughs> out on YouTube. So we're going to see you then, guys. Okay? Bye. Bye, guys.